thank you so much, dear Farid and Jana, for inviting me to the webinar and uh, for introducing me. Um, and let me also uh, welcome all the attendees. So warm greetings to everyone. And uh, thank you very much, dear Farid, for introducing cross-curricularity at, cross at the very beginning, before the webinar, actually. So you've combined uh, elements of animation, of ICT, art, and music. So you've already introduced the subject of cross-curricularity. Um, so, Let me now draw your attention to the subject of my presentation. Is it visible? Yes, yeah, hopefully, it is, it is hopefully, yeah, it's you, you okay. do it's see great. it. So yeah. the, the subject, the main subject of uh, my um, talk is cross-curricular language learning and teaching in secondary school practice, the case of the gamified project agent. So that's the main subject. And I'll, I'll begin my considerations uh, with formulating a question, one question actually. Cross-curricular language learning and teaching in a secondary school, fiction or perhaps reality? And in order to answer this question, I need to um, emphasize, to point to the role of the project agent, which I will uh, soon describe in more detail. Uh, and here's an outline of the notions that I'm going to discuss. So I'll start with the concept of cross-curricularity and related term CLIL, uh, and then move on to the project method. I will uh, describe the project agent and its cross-curricular links. And after the presentation and discussion of cross-curricular content from the project, I'll quote selected students and teachers' opinions and remarks about this form of work and its contribution to cross-curricular language learning and teaching. And I'll end my talk with conclusions that will eventually answer the question that I have just uh, formulated, that I have just posed. Um, let me now indicate that cross-curricularity is a term that denotes integration of different school subjects. In the context of learning and teaching, it is taken to designate a model of education which involves linking and combining knowledge and skills from various disciplines. And it can thus, and in our classes, we can actually relate to and combine the content of different subjects, such as, for instance, geography, history, biology, mathematics, art. And we can do it through a certain theme, problem, or experience, which can be taken into account uh, by teachers and students in their classroom work. And in my opinion, it is the language teachers who have uh, the greatest opportunities for content integration as language, teach as language teaching uh, and learning necessitates uh, familiarization of students with different areas of life. Uh, and such is the case, uh, for instance, uh, with, uh, voca uh, with vocabulary learning. And when discussing the concept of cross-curricularity, I need to relate to uh, Jonathan Savage, a leading uh, figure in cross-curricular research, who notes that a cross-curricular approach to, te to teaching is characterized by sensitivity towards and a synthesis of knowledge, skills, and understanding standings from various subject areas. This inform an enriched pedagogy that promotes an approach to learning which embraces methods. So what is suggested uh, in this uh, passage, and uh, what's suggested here, is that the essence of cross-curricular language learning and teaching is integration, or in Savage's words, synthesis of knowledge and skills from various domains. And the opinion of uh, Savage um, in the opinion of Jonathan Savage, um, this synthesis or integration uh, helps to prepare young people for holistic perception and interpretation of the world and for effective performance of tasks in modern society, 
I would even add a multi-skill performance of students, right? Okay, and considering, um, considering cross-curricularity in the context of foreign language learning and teaching, I will point to the approach called CLIL, that is Content and Language Integrated Learning. And uh, according to this approach, integration involves linking the language other than the student's mother tongue with the content typical of the specific school subjects, such as uh, geography, history, and so on. So in other, oh, thank you very much for cross-curricular content introduced into the slides. Uh, it's also a part of cross-curricularity. Uh, and so in, in other words, um, in, according to CLIL, uh, we combine, we link the language content with the content characteristic of a given subject. And the mechanism of challenging and channeling cross-curricular content in educational conditions can be represented in the model shown here on the screen. Uh, in the model, we can identify several factors uh, which affect the process of transmitting cross-curricular content to students such as educational authorities with the Minister of Education and his regulations and recommendations, the person of a teacher, and materials, methods, and techniques which are used in the process of learning and teaching. And a key role is assigned here to the person of a teacher who first analyzes and interprets cross-curricular content on his own or in cooperation with other teachers. So, which, so for example, geography, biology, or history teachers, and then channels this content to uh, students in a variety of ways. And I must say cross-curricular learning and teaching is very adaptable and dynamic, which means that it can be implemented at different educational levels, that is primary, secondary, and academic, and it can undergo a number of uh, changes and modifications depending, for instance, on learners' age, needs, interests, skills, and level of knowledge. In literature, we can identify three models of integrating school subjects. The first one is monodisciplinary, the second one multidisciplinary, and the third one interdisciplinary. Let me now explain all the three models. So the monodisciplinary model is most common it in schools, it stands to reflect the work done only by one teacher who takes the role of an investigator and who often obtains information about a particular problem from his colleagues. Such a teacher studies the problem by himself and chooses the content which he finds most proper and interesting for his classes. Please pay attention to the arrows in the models that I, that I present to you because they are important as they show the directions of content transfer between subjects. The multidisciplinary model involves the work of several teachers who in their lessons discuss a given problem, but in each lesson it is presented from a different perspective. Teaching in this model is more complicated as it requires from teachers uh, consultations and um, good team cooperation. And contrary to the multidisciplinary model, the interdisciplinary one involves a certain hierarchy of presentation of content and a choice of the way in which different school subjects can be linked together. It is important here to choose one subject which will introduce uh, the, the problem and then other subjects which will gradually develop it. And this model doesn't allow any changes in the order of uh, subjects. Uh, so it, uh, or lessons, let's say. And uh, it, however, guarantees students a better insight into the problem and a more holistic uh, presentation of the given topic in their minds. And cross-curricular materials and tasks which we use in our classes, no matter uh, which uh, model we follow, uh, can actually help us to relate students' learning to their life experiences 
to point to similarities between individual create opportunities for interdisciplinary learning and for holistic perception and interpretation of the world by young people and to develop meaningful cooperation and collaboration of this school community. I must say that various materials, methods and activities can contribute to students cross curricular work in a class. And by using them, we, we can integrate the content of different school subjects and prepare young people, as Savage noted, to better function in the modern and complex multidimensional world. And out of these, uh, of special interest for me is the project work, which is underlined, uh, and which I will describe in more detail in the latter part of my talk. So let me, uh, in, 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 let me now explain what actually a project is. So in order to do it, I'd like to quote three definitions, which I had a chance to present in one of articles in 2013. I think there is a mistake. And the first definition is as follows, a prime example of experiential learning, which encourages students to integrate knowledge and skills in a natural way, to think and act creatively, to cooperate with others, to communicate in a variety of ways, and to prepare for lifelong learning and challenges facing people in their adult life. The other definitions to be quoted here are a special form of work in which learners are personally involved and in which they reveal their own experience, and a type of personal and individual work of students who thanks to it can show their ideas, interests and tastes, and who can manifest their emotions and feelings about the subjects addressed in the project. And I need to emphasize that uh, project work in the school context cannot be successfully done without the contribution of both teachers and students. It is actually educators and learners uh, who take a number of steps to first plan and organize the project, which is usually the main task of a teacher, and to complete it, which is the main task of students. In project work, we can distinguish several stages, or some scholars identify them as phases, and they are planning and organizing activities, collecting, studying, and selecting information and materials presenting results of one's own work, and finally, evaluating the project. At the stage of organizing the project, uh, the teacher is recommended to answer the fun several fundamental questions and very basic ones. Who, what, why, where, when, and how? So who, who is the project addressed to? What? What is its subject and form? Why? Why is the project done? Where? Where does it take place? When? When is it held? And how? How is it carried out, uh, monitored, and evaluated? So these are fundamental questions for us, for us to be asked. Um, and after all the preparations are made, comes the stage of project completion, which may involve a variety of materials and tools. And the end products of students' work with these materials and tools may take different forms, such as written, oral, artistic, manual, and ICT supported. And after this brief insight into project work, let me now concentrate and draw your attention to this specific project called Agent, which appeared in the title of my talk. And I defined this project as experiential work with a set of tasks and activities designed to integrate and test students' knowledge and skills in the out-of-school setting, a conventional form of learning and teaching, which encourages project participants to identify and appreciate tourist attractions and unique objects of a given city or town, to incorporate information about them in project materials, 
and to present results of their work in various forms. It's content of different school subjects, makes learning pleasurable and challenging, and allows teachers and students to engage in sightseeing to obtain information about the particular urban area and its people, and to develop positive attitudes to sport and active recreation. The game elements which we can distinguish in uh, this project are as follows. A story about agents having a special mission to perform in a given city or town, rules which must be obeyed by them, conflict which results in a competition between groups, levels which are reached after completing tasks in so-called restaurants, scores which lead to classification and assessment of groups in the project, and prices such as tickets to the cinema, gadgets, and suites which participants receive after the project. And the project is actually based on a series of tasks and activities assigned by teachers to students in out-of-school conditions, usually in a city or town which students do not know very well. In the project, students are divided into several groups of five to six persons and complete tasks in different parts of the given area. And the same series of tasks circulates among groups of students uh, and who at each of several stages of the project are provided with sets of instructions different, different from the ones that others have at that time. Teachers uh, whose role is that of observers of students' actions rather than initiators or facilitators of these actions. And uh, there are also some, uh, some other teachers located in different parts of the city, usually cafes and restaurants, waiting for students and providing them with new sets of tasks uh, to be done. And the set of steps that teachers and students follow in the project includes visiting the city and selecting places of interest, planning and devising tasks, exercises, and march routes, preparing project materials, dividing students into groups of usually five or six persons, assigning tasks to teachers, arriving in the city and completing tasks by students and teachers, and finally evaluating the project. And the project which I describe here uh, was, initi was initiated by me in 2005, and since then, 28 editions have taken place in different towns and cities in Poland and abroad. For example, Poznań, Wrocław, Toruń, Berlin, Dresden, and so far 660 students and 23 teachers from the complex of secondary schools number one in Krotoshin have participated in the project. Now let me discuss the role which this project plays in cross-curricular language learning and teaching. And to do it, and to do it, I need to present tasks from selected editions of the project and to point to the school subjects which they relate to, for example, geography, history, social studies, ICT, biology, mathematics, PE, and, and others. <laughs> First, however, I need to indicate that uh, the project uh, agent corresponds to the CIL approach because it combines both linguistic content and non-linguistic content. The linguistic component of the project requires from students comprehension and production of language in its written and spoken forms. And this component allows them to develop four language skills as well as lexical and grammatical knowledge. The non-linguistic component on the other hand helps them to master competences specific to a particular subject and to use tools, materials, and forms of work characteristic of, of this subject. 
And now I'd like to present you the curricular content of the project. And in the presented material, you will, be, you will have a chance to see a student's work and uh, solutions to the problems which uh, uh, they have uh, been faced with. And for obvious reasons, students' faces uh, have been masked in the photo documentation that I'm going to show you. So the main component of the project is, of course, language. It is present at almost all stages of uh, the project. Students listen, speak, read, and write in a foreign language, and in this way gain information about the particular or the given area and its objects, people, and peculiarities. A language in this project uh, had serves a double function. It is both a channel and a goal. A channel because it helps to relate to the surrounding real areas of life, and a goal because when doing projects, uh, project uh, tasks, students are expected to develop their language knowledge and skills. So it, it is a double function of uh, the language performed in the, in the project. Another subject which can be identified in the project is geography. And students in the project explore new places, identify their characteristics, and build a net of associations with a particular area. They develop their sense of direction, enrich their sightseeing experience, and increase their tourism awareness. Another subject is history, adding historical facts and figures, project participants learn about people from the past and gain an insight into their lives and achievements. They, for instance, seek information about kings, noble families, uh, academics, artists, musicians, writers, and activists who are somehow connected with a given area, uh, with, a, with a town or with, uh, the, with, with, with the town or city which students visit in the project. Culture content in the project motivates uh, students to consider different spheres of human life, such as music, film, literature, and art. It allows them to appreciate and reflect on cultural products, both home and foreign ones, and thus develop cultural, or I would even say intercultural, knowledge and awareness. In the tasks of social character, Students interact with other people and obtain information from them and about them. These tasks also draw their attention to the most prominent figures of the visited city or town, such as local government representatives, academics, sportsmen, and artists. Biology-related tasks stimulate participants to distinguish and describe elements of the natural environment within the urban area. And these tasks help uh, young people to practice their skills in flora and fauna identification, observation, and presentation. Mathematic calculations, although not very demanding ones, uh, provide students with clues about the places which they are supposed to reach and solve tasks. And, uh, but uh, calculations are also made on products, for instance, which, they, uh, which students find and uh, choose in shops uh, or at Christmas markets, because projects uh, are also held at Christmas markets. The artwork is an integral part of the project, which draws students' attention to important elements of the city scenery. And encourages them to express in the artistic manner what they actually see in a particular of their net of associations with uh, the visited area. Manual tasks such as gluing, cutting, baking help to prepare young people to use different materials and tools in their lives and to engage in multi-skill projects as adults. 
The music component in the project not only tests a students' music skills and memory, but also allows them to express different feelings and emotions and to show some active skills as well. In the project, students work with online sources and, uh, ap and uh, application programs in computers and smartphones. And this helps them to become aware of the important role which ICT tools play in education and in real life. In the project, students also learn how to be effective in different types of business transactions. They develop skills of testing and comparing products, calculating costs, and purchasing the, co the, the, the chosen items at the lowest prices. And the final um, subject, by competing with others and moving very quickly from place to place, they engage in sport activities and thus become aware of the physical condition and their body reactions. At this point, I need to support the information that I have just presented with the opinions and uh, comments of students and teachers from the complex of secondary school number one in Krotoshin who have participated in this uh, project. Of course, I've chosen only the ones which emphasize this cross-curricular character of the project presented by the third grader, uh, who is at present an EFL teacher in Poznań. And uh, she expressed her opinion in the following way. The project named Agent is an unusual game that connects physical and mental activity. While the main stress in this project is laid on the improvement of the English language skills, competences in other school subjects are developed as well. In visited places, numerous pieces of information can be found along with important dates and interesting figures. One can learn not only about historical facts, but also about past and present customs of people in this specific area. Geography, due to the need of orientation and space. History with interesting and very important facts from particular cities past. Languages, not only foreign, but also mother tongue and mathematics. All these subjects are combined into one and are presented in the atmosphere of an interesting game and good fun. And another opinion of a student, also third grader, is as follows. In the project agent, we can revise our knowledge and learn something new from different subjects. Because there are many tasks in the project, we must use different skills and connect information from such fields as geography, history, languages, science, and culture. And now let me present two uh, opinions of teachers. One of them is of a GFL teacher and the other of an EFL teacher. Uh, this enterprise is very good idea in subjects. In project agents, students can learn how to use foreign language in different situations. Students also learn about famous people and historical places. Students who take part in this project actually break language barriers, get to know new cities, and concentrate on many school subjects. This project connects pleasant and useful things. I think this is praiseworthy enterprise. And one more comment of an EFL teacher. Thanks to participating in the project agents, students not only test their language skills, but also increase their knowledge in different school subjects. A large number of tasks and questions helps them to inter interrelate such areas as geography, history, ICT, PE, mathematics, cultural studies, and science. And in my conclusions, I'd like to go back to the question which I formulated at the very beginning of my talk, that is cross-curricular language learning and teaching in a secondary school fiction is definitely a reality. And why? Due to the project agent, which integrates the content of different school subjects, including language, and motivates to interdisciplinary work, contextualizes teaching and learning, allows the use of a variety of tools, materials, and forms of work, helps to link theory with practice, 
guarantees exploration of a given city or town in an attractive way, adds the fun character to learning and teaching processes, enhances creativity, and I would add contributes to the promotion of a holistic approach in education and prepares young people to make cross-curricular links in life and thus to function more effectively. But before I end my talk, I'd like to draw your attention to one more project of cross-curricular nature that is the seventh international conference cross-curricularity in language education which I have the pleasure to organize in Krotoshin in September 2000, uh, I mean this year, uh, with Joanna as a co-organizer and Ferit as a keynote speaker. And uh, for more information about the conference, you can access the conference website or ad address uh, or um, send uh, an email. I have time, and if you wish me to present some more opinions, some more general opinions about about the project, and maybe go back to the task because uh, you may have not uh, read them carefully. So I don't know, Ferit, if I have time, if I am given time, and if you wish to have a look at the uh, at more general opinions about the project and at the tasks and their content have a closer look at them. Do, do, do we have time? Uh, actually, yes, uh, we have uh, around 10 minutes or so for but Marek, for the questions, you know, Q and A. And a oh, I see. Okay, okay, so, um, so maybe let me just, let me just very quickly show uh, the tasks so that you have a closer look at them. It's very interesting here in Milic, which looks quite a recent addition, because you see here not only uh, the task itself, but also the answer or the, the written form uh, of, uh, of student, uh, pre presented by students. So uh, let me just read how creative students were in this task, uh, to, to show how creative students were in this task. So he found, but he had a dream. He always wanted to see the land. His parents never let him see the world. When he became an adult, he made his dream come true. He jumped out of the water and the rainbow crossed him and all of the colors appeared on his scales. You see the colors in the picture drawn by students. One of the fishermen got him and decided to make it a symbol of milage. So it's a very nice story combined and the task combines both uh, art, artistic skills and of course language skills and creativity, it involves creativity of students. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, inquiries, comments about the project, so please do not hesitate to address them, feel free. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Marek, for your inspiring and very, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, we are um, really glad that you uh, accepted our invitation and so we can have you here. And um, uh, you can read all great comments on our chat, uh, which um, are also somehow incentive to a, a discussion, to dialogue, which is generally our main motto of our meetings, webinars, to have this international um, uh, dialogue of, of teachers. Uh, we uh, have some questions, of course, to all of you. If you have any questions, you can both write them now, or you can as well um, um, inform us that you would like to ask uh, questions directly. Uh, so I guess... Um, we have quite many questions now. I will start from the beginning. The first question uh, from Tamari, who will also be a keynote speaker on the conference that Marek um, uh, announced here. Uh, so 
I'm interested if project-based learning is integrated in university curriculum and what are its main outcomes? Okay, so actually um, uh, the, the project itself is uh, performed by students from the complex of secondary schools uh, in Krotoshin, but I also tested it with students in the universities I worked I worked in, I, I worked in, and I also tested it with students from uh, Lithuania. Uh, they were asked to prepare uh, project materials themselves for their colleagues, university, uh, let's say, classes that I offered to students. And I involved my students quite recently in, the, uh, in producing materials for secondary school students for the edition of, uh, of uh, the Christmas market in Wrocław uh, project agent. So, of course, it can be implemented at different levels of education. So it can be implemented at the primary, secondary and uh, university levels. But of course, we need to take into account uh, the the type of the types of students we deal with we we, we have in our class so we need to adjust uh, the project materials and tasks to their age needs interests and so on and so forth and abilities and a level of 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 their language knowledge but it is as i said adaptable so it can be performed also at the university level i think it will be a very attractive attractive one for university students thank you very much uh, now the next question uh, it's generally comment and a question um, so aside the language teacher developing uh, linguistic skills of learners uh, there's also the development of knowledge and ideas in other subjects uh, this requires the language teacher, therefore, to master concepts in these other areas. Uh, this can be quite burdening, isn't it? It's not so burdening if you have colleagues with whom you can consult and you can cooperate. So actually the project itself is a result of cooperation of teachers. So if, uh, of course, uh, of the whole project, uh, doesn't know uh, something or he wants to, uh, uh, doesn't know something or he wants to consult uh, a subject teacher. So he just uh, um, addresses some questions to uh, the subject teachers. And in this way, he finds information and, uh, and consults uh, and um, verifies if the tasks he prepares are adequate and uh, understandable and uh, can be used with students. So, uh, of course, uh, if you have a team of uh, teachers who uh, get on very well and understand one another, you can easily prepare such projects. And there were, there were some additions, um, uh, I, I would say bilingual additions. So I relied, for example, on my GFL uh, teachers then and their skills in order to produce, produce materials also in the German language. So uh, in this case, uh, it was uh, cooperation of German and, uh, and so everything depends, of course, on the team you work with. Uh, so in short, everything's possible. Everything depends on, on people and great cooperation. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, thank you very much for sharing this uh, insightful presentation. The idea of the project is very interesting. I have a question. Uh, due to COVID-19 and Omicron virus, uh, schools in Alg Algeria are closed uh, again. How can we possibly implement the project-based learning? Yeah, that was the case uh, due to the 
pandemic, uh, so, uh, we, we couldn't organize the project in real at the Christmas market, for example, in Wrocław um, uh, last year in 2021. And this is why we organized it in online, online. And this was treated as an experiment, which I must say it was quite successful. Uh, so we organized it online with some links uh, to the maps. We organized activities with the use of these online maps. And of course, uh, they had the curricular cross-curricular character as well, but they were not organized in the place at the Christmas market, but uh, they, they had the online form. So it is also possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, how can we enhance students' English language skills using cross-curricular project, I guess? Marek? So actually, I've, I've pointed uh, to some spheres. So you, yes? Yes, yes. Go on. Yes, Madonna. Is it? Yes. Okay. So go on, please. So actually, you, right. So, so uh, students practice, for example, vocabulary. Uh, students practice in this project vocay, we combine vocabulary knowledge from different fields of uh, life, right? And in this way, they also gain information from the particular subject, which uh, is focused, which is concentrated on in the task. So, so uh, you, you, you've seen references to, uh, uh, to numerous subjects in the project, and they have this specific vocabulary uh, in the task and students are obliged or required, maybe not obliged, but required uh, or asked to present also the vocabulary related to the specific object. So in this way, we develop uh, lingu language skills. Also reading materials, also listening, uh, because they have to listen to, to teachers and they have to exchange opinions, views, narrate uh, events. All of them relate to certain spheres of human life, related, of course, to the city they are in, right? They, uh, they visit. And of course, it all uh, increases students' motivation. Exactly. Motivation, autonomy and creativity of teachers and students, which was also dealt in one of my uh, papers. Okay. Is cross-curriculum uh, the interference of subjects horizontally uh, with the target language vertically? Uh, they meet each other, for example, teaching some historical knowledge in English, just like uh, Khalil? Yes, they, uh, so, uh, they, they meet, right? The, these two uh, components or um, content, the, uh, the linguistic and non-linguistic content, they of course meet in exercises, but also in um, well, so there are two schools, uh, one, uh, there are two approaches, let's say. One uh, says, one indicates that we incorporate the subject uh, content to language classes. And the other, of course, is uh, that we incorporate language and we conduct classes in a specific subject uh, in a foreign language. So, um, and uh, within these two approaches, of course, the linguistic content and the non-linguistic content meet together. Mm -hmm. um, the next question. Uh, your, your topic um, uh, was so interesting that there are so many questions, but that's our idea to have this kind of discussion. Uh, to make our students learners career ready, and or probably uh, be college ready, how is an entrepreneurial mind integrated in such a framework to uh, keep um, learners with valuable negotia uh, negotiating language skills and calculated risk-taking skills? 
Yes, yeah, so I, I will just repeat it. I will repeat what I've already said that, of course, we need to make adjustments to the university level. So the task needs to be more complicated. Here, as you see, um, uh, business uh, or the business content is quite simple, but, but this is adjust, adjusted to the level students represent. Of course, if you take into account university students, the, uh, the, the uh, tasks must be more complicated, right? Must be adjusted to their level of knowledge in the language and in the specific subject that is business studies, for instance, right? Um, thank you, Marek. Uh, what was your role in the project work? Uh, was it your idea, your research? That's the next question. Yes, uh, to, to answer this question is, uh, 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 the, the answer to this question is yes, I was the initiator of the project. I initiated it in 2005, as I said. And although I do not work in this school any longer, I still cooperate with the teachers and students of this school. So I prepare projects for them. And I'm the main coordinator of, uh, the, uh, of all the project additions. And of course, you're planning to continue. Let me just get one with the I project. am planning to continue. As you can see, uh, students are quite willing uh, to participate in this, uh, in this project, in this event, uh, because uh, it, 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 they consider it very attractive, right? There was a period of time when they didn't want to go on trips, uh, school trips, but they wanted just only participate in the, participate in the project. Now, the situation has changed due to the pandemic, so they want to participate both in school trips and in project work. But there was a time when uh, students were unwilling to go on, say, flourished in school conditions was the project itself. Yes, and uh, let me just add one thing. So uh, the idea of the project came to me after watching a TV program called Agent. This is why I adopted the name, although the name is perfect because uh, it, it actually shows uh, that uh, it actually um, implies this, uh, this agency, learner's agency, right? And teacher's agency as well. So um, this is why I, uh, so I adopted uh, it, um, or I've taken the name from the, uh, the television program. And also um, the mechanism was similar in, in the television program. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, let's, um, let's continue with uh, questions. Question from Fidel. Uh, thank you, dear Marek. It was an interesting project. I wonder uh, what could be done uh, for sustainability of such project outcomes. Every project aims to create new outcomes, um, but what could be done for the visibility and sustainability? As for the university level, I believe standardization of the curriculum for the cross-curriculum learning outcomes is essential. That means teamwork uh, with the calls from the uh, subject field. What do you think? Okay. Marek? Well, thank you very much. On, on, honestly, it's an, it's a, I, would, I, I would call it, it's an, extracurricular activity. So it's not take, it's not introduced, incorporated into the curriculum, but I think it would be a great idea to incorporate such a project of this sort of the cross-curricular nature into curricula. And uh, as, as a suggestion, for example, for teachers uh, to implement this form uh, at different educational levels. So uh, yes, why not? I would, I would answer. 
<laughs> okay. Um, uh, what are the barriers uh, that we might encounter if we implement the project in the context of the university? And what is the most important thing that we should concentrate uh, while implementing in the university? Okay, so uh, at the university level, of course, I think uh, the, 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 the most problematic thing, which also is at the, um, at the secondary school level for an organizer or for organizers, is uh, this um, uh, circulation of tasks among groups, right? So th that's, that's very important because we don't want to have unwanted cooperation of groups. So we organize tasks in such a way that they circulate around uh, groups. And this is more, uh, uh, let's say, time and efforts, uh, time consuming, and it, it demands a lot of effort, right? So uh, not even preparation of tasks themselves, because if you touch a specific subject at the university level, you have certain competences, knowledge and skills uh, to uh, pass knowledge to students and you know which, uh, uh, which aspects and which content to deal with. But uh, the most problematic thing is, of course, uh, to, um, to, 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 to take care of the circulation of tasks, right? Because it takes, it is a long lasting uh, process, I must, uh, process and, and, and uh, action that, that, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, project uh, we have requires. Two, uh, and in the, at the, sorry, sorry. Well, at the, at the secondary school level, we also have a problem with monitoring students because in not all editions, uh, groups are assisted and uh, to each group uh, a teacher is uh, assigned. Uh, so each group is not assigned with a teacher. So sometimes uh, you, you see students separating from the group, which is not allowed, for example, in, in this project, right? So they need to cooperate together and uh, and do the tasks together. So if they decide to go in one direction, so the whole goal, the whole group goes in this particular direction. So they cannot separate. And, and it, we had cases. Of course, these were just individual from, from groups. But circulation, definitely circulation of tasks, so that. Uh, we avoid this unwanted cooperation of uh, groups in one place so that we don't have uh, uh, one, all the groups gathered in one place and doing the same task because it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will move to the next question on the chat. And then uh, concerning the, the order, we have two people who would like to ask uh, questions personally, I, I see here. Um, it's Leszek and another person, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, Ferit, could you uh, then unmute uh, the participants who would like to uh, ask a question directly. So, but, but first of all, the question on the chat, um, can you name some skills that cross-curricularity uh, requires uh, uh, from 21st century teachers to have? Cross-curricular. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, the skills that cross-curricularity requires um, 21st century teachers to have? Okay, so uh, 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 let me point, uh, because we are talking about teachers, so let me point to uh, their cap uh, capability of, uh, of uh, selecting information and uh, finding different sources, um, organizing materials and design, designing and organizing materials, um, organizing different um, attractive um, uh, forms of work for students because traditional classes uh, are not attractive for students any, any longer. This is why projects like this one, cross-curricular projects, are much more attractive for students. So these are the skills that teachers need to, uh, let's say, reveal, show 
uh, in their work. So uh, good organization, of course, and teamwork, you need to cooperate. So I've, I've already mentioned it. So you need to be able to cooperate with your colleagues from a particular institution, because in this way, you can organize uh, huge uh, projects uh, like uh, the one that is presented here. I must say it's quite huge, uh, taking into account the number of students that have participated in the project. Great, thank you very much. And uh, as I mentioned, we have two people, two participants who'd like to ask a question um, directly. I guess one uh, one of them is Leszek, uh, am I right? Uh, Farid, could you unmute um, uh, the participants who would like to, and I saw another person, but I, I cannot see now. Well, I um, think they, they have uh, lowered their hands. So could them again, please, yeah. you know, raise their good. hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot see, you know, the names. Okay, okay. Leszek, I think. Just a second. Um, okay. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, hi, Marek. Best greetings from Leszno. Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting talk. And um, as you know, I've been uh, engaged uh, with, I've been involved in, uh, many theoretical courses and uh, I've been wondering whether this type of project work could be used with a theoretical content course like uh, one I'm teaching this year that's on general linguistics at a grad level and of course I would be very happy to make the course far more interesting and far more attractive to my students than it is actually right now. What do you think? Can uh, Could this type of project work be used with a purely theoretical content course? Okay, thank you very much, dear Leszek, for the for the question, and it's nice to see you. Um, uh, yes, I, I must say yes. I think you need to change the formula of the project, and uh, of course, the station work uh, can be adopted by you, and uh, you can organize either in classroom conditions or, if you wish, you can go to some institution and organize it. Uh, for example, uh, to um, but, but since you are at the university, so it would be good to organize it within the uh, school buildings. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, you can just prepare certain tasks uh, uh, on this subject that you teach. And um, apart from the project work, which I can suggest, uh, I can also suggest you uh, the use of other forms, other techniques like a uh, game, uh, like as uh, because this is a game, but also songs depend, of course, on the subject that you teach. But songs can be used, for instance, in teaching uh, grammar, uh, descriptive grammar or practical grammar. So you can use also the forms, which, of course, in, were incorporated into this project as well. So uh, maybe um, not, uh, you, you can think either of this project or some other, uh, some other forms, like, for instance, the use of songs. To be honest, I used uh, songs in a practical grammar course and in descriptive course, especially Christmas songs, which I must say, uh, uh, I must say I've been very successful because I've introduced um, um, a pleasant atmosphere in the course and you combined in this uh, way, the fun, uh, fun and of course uh, the material that you need to focus on in your uh, course. So. Uh, of course, as I say, teachers need to be creative and need to come up with a certain uh, students and teachers, not only teachers, but also students. And I think this creativity is shown in this project. So we just need to think of certain forms of work which could be adequate to our students, which will involve them in the process of learning. So. Of course, project agent uh, would be a nice idea, but in a, in a different formula. So we need to think of other tasks and activities. For, uh, we can also um, uh, incorporate uh, songs into the, our course, university course, which also will make this pleasant atmosphere in the class. I hope I've, I've explained your answer, uh, your, your question, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm sure uh, that you, you did it perfectly. Uh, I think we have uh, one more person who, uh, who wanted to ask a question uh, personally. Uh, can we ask the person to, to raise uh, his or her hand? Because I, I saw that there was someone who, who wanted to, so that we can unmute you and you can ask your, your question directly. Well, just, just a second. I think Leszek says he's uh, muted. Just a second. Uh, just. Uh, huh? Okay. There, yeah. Uh, is there any? Yeah, I, I can. Okay, because uh, Leszek says. Oh. He's yeah, on, yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm unmuted right now. Thank you so much, Marek. I just wanted to thank Marek, uh, and I think I will, will contact him via email about this because uh, my course is purely theoretical. The courses Marek mentioned could be made it more practical. For instance, when I teach uh, descriptive grammar, I make it uh, more practical than theoretical. But how about language universals? That would be far more difficult to put uh, into a practical way. But anyway, thank you, Marek. I hope, uh, I think I'll need to contact you about that. Okay, thank you very much, dear Leszek, and let's keep in touch. Uh, uh, can I say something? Can I say something, <laughs> Joanna and Marek? Uh, Marek, is it okay if you share your email address? Because yes, there are I wanted, questions. Yes. I wanted, uh, suge I wanted to, to, to suggest that. Uh, Marek, could you, uh, could you please share your email? Because there are uh, really many questions, and unfortunately, uh, there are um, our uh, th there is still um, uh, another presentation left that uh, will be um, as interesting, and I hope um, uh, you will you will stay with us. Uh, but uh, we have one one more person who wanted to ask question directly, and I think that the person can ask this question. And after that, uh, the the rest of questions, uh, Marek will answer uh, by uh, by email. Also, one more thing, um, uh, Marek mentioned uh, the the conference, uh, and uh, if you like our um, our webinar, and you would like to maybe um, uh, just share your opinions and, and come to the conference and, and uh, somehow uh, share with us uh, your experience. Um, we, we invite you um, cordially to, to, to take part in it. Uh, I guess, Mark, you can also uh, put the link to that um, in, um, in the chat. Also, one more thing, and then we will ask uh, Shamadan to, to ask uh, in, uh, Ibrahim to, sorry, to, to, to ask a question. Um, for all of you, uh, we, we would like it to be a kind of community to share, um, share information, uh, share uh, call for papers, etc. So if if you have any interesting uh, data you would like to share, uh, we can send to all our participants. Uh, so, so we can always contact us, and and um, uh, we we uh, hope that um, that will be our uh, small contribution to uh, to be a part of uh, the discussing community of uh, English language teachers. Okay, um, now uh, Farid, could you um, help uh, Ibrahim to to ask the question by unmuting? Yeah, I have asked uh, him or her, uh, I don't know, so to... Well, we're really sorry for that. <laughs> okay, most probably him, you're right. Uh, I've asked him to unmute. Could you please, uh, Shamadan, I'm not sure about the, the, how to pronounce it's your e name. Ibrahim, I guess. Yeah, I cannot see it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'll ask you to unmute, <laughs> okay? But he's not responding. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, he's not responding. Yeah, just okay. Again, I'm That's asking it. him to unmute because I cannot do it automatically, Joanna. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ibrahim, also, um, yeah. can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself and ask the question? Okay, now he's unmuted. Okay, okay great. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, we cannot hear him. Yeah. And maybe there's a problem with the microphone. I don't know. So we okay. cannot hear you if you are speaking. 
and I think we have to move, Joanna, <laughs> on to mm, the next. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Uh, so so let's um, let's do it that, uh, that way. Um, uh, Marek, could you share your uh, email address and could you share the conference link? Uh, and uh, we'll move to the next um, uh, participant. Um, participants. Uh, so so. Um, thank you once again, Marek, okay. um, and uh, we are staying in touch, of thank course. Thank you for inviting me to the webinar. And of course, if you happen to have uh, some questions and comments, so please address them either to the conference uh, email address or to the email address that I will give you in a moment, okay? And I will share, of course, the, the conference website as well, as well. So thank you so much, and thank you for your attention and all the nice comments, remarks, and questions addressed to the project and to the organizers, students participating so, Marek, uh, in this. Yeah, thank event. you so much for your talk, Marek.